Welcome to More Than a Song, where you get a chance to experience great music in an intimate concert setting. You will also get a chance to go beyond the lyrics with the artist to get the God experience revealed in their journey. I'm Denise Graves, and on today's show, we will feature Andrew Greer, the multiple Dove Award-nominated singer-songwriter and respected author is known for his old soul styling. The native Texan and now Nashville resident's soulful folk gospel sound displays a deep affection for vintage spiritual songs. Let's join Andrew's first set today with accompaniment from Kyle Buchanan. I've been hurting my brother like there's no other way to respond. Building up an arsenal of bitter accusations like I need hate to fight him off. Gonna need some mercy from completely outside of me. Taste not forgiveness, so teach me how you carry that cross for everyone. When the tide of pride sweeps me into the deep dark sea, will you set your My heart's been breaking in so many places I can't tell my friends. Too afraid of judgment than picking up the pieces that I'll just pretend. Oh, carrying a load about a hundredfold heavier than I can bear. You'll have to send an angel in a really good advice if I've got one single prayer. Shadow. 
us fall for our behind you know the sun's gonna break on the hands giving hope forsaking all of my weary woes Savior be for me with him I'll go braving the winds of my shifting soul I've been searching all of my life sorrow vision in the night but blood has spoken for me with arms open wide to say now Jesus walk the waters and I will ride the waves Jesus walk the waters and I will ride the waves named Jenny Owens, who's a singer-songwriter where we come from in Nashville, and uh, she and I wrote a book together uh, that released earlier this year, and it took us about two years to write it. We are not book writers, so it's a very loose term to call us authors, but uh, we did feel like we had something to say, and we were asked to say it and, and say it in that form, and so we took on the task, we took on the challenge uh, of writing a book. I remember someone presented me with the question when we, right after we signed this book deal, and, and they asked us to write this book that by the way, is based around the Old Testament, and we are not seminarians nor are we theologians uh, of any kind of refined sort. And so a friend asked me, said, well, what qualifies you to write this book? I thought that was a fantastic question. And so I uh, was meeting with my pastor a couple days later, and I said, you know what does qualify someone? Here you are a doctorate uh, in some kind of theolo uh, theological degree and uh, a, a deep in his seminary work, a very thoughtful Bible reader and studier, and he said the same thing that qualifies us all, and that is the spirit living within us. And so he really uh, encouraged me, and then I encouraged Jenny, that maybe in fact uh, the words that we had to say and the words that we have to sing um, each and every day in our conversations, whether it be in a book format, in a song, or uh, just around the kitchen table, are uh, imbued and infused with great meaning because of who lives inside of us. And uh, my cousin one time said, don't ever doubt God inside you because God is no small thing. Therefore, what you do is no small thing. And um, I think that's something that's very easy to forget. And I think that's obvious. We live out of a place uh, a lot of times uh, where it seems that we are saying God is maybe perhaps small. Uh, we wrote this book to try to, uh, it's called Transcending Mysteries. And we wanted to try to discover who is God by looking uh, at the Israelites' journey throughout the Old Testament, and then paralleling that, or seeing if it paralleled, seeing if there was any relationship with their journey and our journey today as 21st century uh, Christians. And I wrote this chapter, uh, Him for Leaving, around a song that I've written, and it's about my granddad, who we talked about earlier, and so, uh, and also about my mother's experience in his death and grief. And I wrote, in the 21st century Western world, we are pressed for time, we pride ourselves on busyness, and when it comes to mourning our losses, we run. Sure, we go to the funeral, we eulogize, we create a touching Facebook post, but we pack our calendar even tighter, smile a little wider, and with bleary eyes, push our feelings down even deeper. This passive reaction to heartbreak is fascinating, considering that people of all different cultures throughout much of humanity's timeline have expressed a period of focused grieving to signify the void left by death, whether physical or emotional. Last winter, Cecil Gerard, my mother's dad, died just shy of 90 years old and at the end of a very full life. Granddad had been missing my grandmother, his bride of nearly 60 years, since she had made her passage to the other side over 10 years before. 
His body and mind were beginning to deteriorate, which as a former geologist and man who was always on top of the details, must have felt like a living death sentence. As a result, he had been preparing his heart and mind for death for years and even more so in his final months. Two weeks before he died, Mom visited him at his assisted living apartment in East Texas. When she walked in, Mom found Granddad fully dressed, sitting on top of his made-up bed, and he was crying. My mother has always been a good friend to her parents, so she sat down beside him and held his hand. He was confused, a feeling he came to know well but never accustomed to. He asked my mom, why am I crying? Holding his hand, my sweet mother replied, I don't know, you must be sad. As if he was her child, Granddad asked my mother's permission, do you think it would be okay if I asked Jesus to take me to heaven tonight? Two weeks later, Granddad went to sleep, never to wake up on this side of life again. After the news reached my mom's fellow teachers, her congregants, and friends, she received plenty of condolences, gracious gestures of kindness, good-hearted sentiments that sounded something like this, I'm glad he went peacefully, or what a full life he lived. You've heard the band-aid phrases, the attempt to make sense of something so very unknowable. When at a loss for words but feeling the need to say something, I too have uttered these blasé statements. It's as if even in our lack of knowing what to say, we want the grieving to know that we identify with how bad that it hurts. Expressions like these remind us that we are loved by our community and by God, but in our moments of loss, grief is the soothing balm. When Granddad made that mysterious passage from one life to the next, my mom felt the sobering transition from being a daughter to becoming a matriarch. For a brief period, she was displaced, out of sync. With death comes a lot of not normal. When we grieve, our heart's sneaking suspicion is that death was not God's original design for life. In the midnight of our confusions, I want to adopt a posture of surrender. I want to lay down my life, not just my circumstances, and begin to discover God all over again, not simply as my disciplining father, but as my compassionate friend.
Leave behind everything we've known Each goodbye aches within our soul Hallelujah Hallelujah Falling hard long away from home part of the giving then our hearts would ache less for the missing you Born in a manger, tiny little stranger to the earth. Sent down from heaven above to save the very worst of us. And every star. beginning of love oh, oh asleep in the night the voices of friends fearfully cry he woke and spoke without fear seas calm the waves they disappear beginning of love.
just as he said on earth as it is in In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world. But give me Jesus. enjoyed the music and stories from Andrew Greer. Thank you for joining us for more than a song. We would love to hear from you. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us for prayer and we will agree with you for God to move in your life. Until next time, keep looking for the message behind the music and listen for the new song he sings over you. I'm Denise Graves and I'll see you next week. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.